Hi kids, welcome to the Comics and More podcast. I'm Patrick Markfort from Articulate Nerd. And I'm Dave Ferrar from Comics and More. And this week we're going to have a special Halloween themed episode as we take a look at Richard Sala's work, who does a lot of that dark, like, monstery type stuff in, throughout his career, mm -hmm. basically. Um, so we're going to be reviewing Peculia later, but first we're going to take a look at his new book, The Hidden. And this is an original graphic novel that was just put out from Fanagraphics. And um, this basically sees the end of the world um, in this post-apocalyptic book where a mad scientist um, decides to create like the perfect man. He, he's, he doesn't have very good view of humanity, so he decides to create humanity from kind of spare parts, it seems like. Um, and these creatures kind of attack the world at large, and... Um, there's, some, there's a few, like, scattered survivors that kind of come together um, and just kind of try to survive off the land, pretty much. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a little weird. There's, like, um, I don't know if they're, they have some powers or something like that, these creatures, or what, but, like, there, there are points where they, like, pretty much make people, like, eat each other and kill each other and stuff like that. So they must have some kind of mental powers. That wasn't very clear to me. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really completely understand that part of it either or how it connected to the yeah. creatures or if it did because i mean it explained where the creatures came from through mm -hmm. this mad scientist but it never really talked about like the powers and all that stuff so i'm not i'm not really sure but um yeah richard sala is not shying away from like the violence in this one he has people tearing each other apart and bashing each other's brains in and yep. um but he he always has these really great um great like monster designs Mm -hmm. Like, they're, they're just, like, really cool looking. And he really does know how to um, create a really suspenseful, like, story. Um, and I think above all else, he is perfect for setting up this, like, great gothic atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Like, he's perfect at that. And his work, his um, art is is great for that. Mm -hmm. um, what do you call that kind of line work that he does with the, with the shading, with the lines? No, like this. Cross hatching. Is it cross hatching? That's what it is. Okay. Um, yeah, the cross hatching stuff that he does. I really like that. <laughs> I don't see it very much in people's works, really. I guess. Um, but I like it. I is, that, is that what you mean? Where like the ink? Yeah, where it's like just like lines. Yeah, that look just like, like shadow. Lines. And yes, things? exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, but this new book is actually in color, which is nice. Um, I kind of like how. Um, you see it like on the on his covers from Peculia too, but um, those are black and white. Um, his new is in, is in color, and you see like the like how he does like colors for cheeks and stuff like that, like the red color and stuff like that. I just like like his sensibility with where he like does the color on people. It's really cool looking. Um, but I don't know. There's this like I don't know. I just really like his work. Mm -hmm. I just like the art. For the most part, it's really dark. Um, there's not much characterization at all. Um, but it's just in this one. I think there was more more so than in like Peculia. I think. I don't know. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I, I think so. They they in in this uh, as compared to some other like his shorter stories in Peculia, which we'll be discussing. Uh, it's a long enough work where he was able to spend some time with the characters, and there were actually scenes in here which were there pretty much just to develop character. Um, so, I mean, it's still a, a fairly brief story, so, I mean, I'm not saying it's, like, you know, the depth that you'd get with, like, a yeah, novel like, or something. Like, tell like me about that. Colleen. What can you tell me about her? Well, but I think she has a really distinct personality, um, that's, that's, um, you know, makes her an individual separate from the other characters. They're not just ciphers to tell this story. Um, you know... I, Sala is primarily interested in the monsters and the mood and the atmosphere and the mm -hmm. look of the book and the story. But I maybe it's because I read this just and Peculia pretty much back to back. But that's actually one thing that stood out to me about this one in that here he is taking time to develop characters a little bit more that who have personalities and a little bit of backstory. And again, it's not, you know... It doesn't go real deep, but I I think um, he does make some effort to um, create some real characters here. Surface characters. 
Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think characters who have uh, the depth required to tell this story. Okay. I guess I will say that I was kind of surprised when, like, one of the main people was kind of mm -hmm. killed. Just like... Yeah, that's the other thing. You care about these these characters mm -hmm. in a way that you don't always care about characters and, and other things Richard Sala has done. Mm -hmm. um, the stakes seem a little bit higher here, I think, because, again, he takes the time to get to know these people a little bit. I thought. A little bit, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. Enough. Yeah. Enough to make an effective story with characters you, you cared about, at least for the duration of... Um, the time he spent reading it. Okay, there are some people like the like the mad sci like mad scientists and stuff like that were just kind of silly. You know what I mean? Like hmm. he didn't have like his memory at first, and then he suddenly like remembers all this mm. horrible stuff. Or he, he was, was kind of like or he was pretending not to have his memory. Yeah, was well, this kind of like I don't know odd. Well, it was um, odd. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. I mean, Sala is uh, is uh, firmly in the. Uh, you know, Charles Adams, Edward Gorey, um, bizarre uh, storytelling camp. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you, I'll grant you odd. Um, I think you're selling the character work a little bit short in this one, but All right. I'm interrupting your review. Well, I don't know. Like, I feel like the, like, I don't know. Like, you see him with scenes where he's kind of like, I don't know, like over the top regretting what he'd done, like mm -hmm. crying. And, I don't know. Well, characters are like overlooking. It just seemed like very over the top and, I don't know, kind of. I don't know. It, I just it just didn't work for me. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, I guess it depends what context you're you're reading it in and what you're comparing it to. I mean, is he reading it as like a campy horror story? Well, no, no, I don't think it's camp. It's yeah. actually played pretty straight. That's what I thought. Um, <laughs> but I do think Sala is informed by monster movies and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the level of, like, characterization and depth he puts into this is, you know, comparable to a lot of that kind of genre storytelling. I would agree with that. I mean, if I was comparing it to Jimmy Corrigan, I'd say, okay, the characters in Jimmy Corrigan are much more fleshed yeah. out, and Richard Sala fails to make his characters as well-rounded, but that's not what Richard Sala is really going for. He's trying to tell this cool story and have characters that can move that story forward and that you care about enough that when, yeah, one of the main characters is, is killed off, it's actually like a shock. It's not just looking at these pictures. Um, it's well, good storytelling, I think. I feel like the reason I was so shocked by that one girl's death is just because it happened so suddenly. There mm -hmm. wasn't any, like, bill it's yeah. not like she was running from them for a long yep. time. It was a sudden, brutal, harsh, and she's dead. Right. But, like, I feel like, like, his characterization is pretty much just based around this plot, like, what they've been dealing yeah. with, with this. It's not well, like, you know, who is this person, you know what I mean? It's just like, what did she do during this circumstance? Like, the two characters yes. who, um... I think that's fair. Yeah. But, that, that's what I mean by it's just like but isn't plot that true, based character. But isn't that true of pretty much any like horror movie? Yes, horror movies. I would say it, it has the, like the level of horror, of like characterization you'd see in Friday Thirteenth. Right. That's well, the, I would even go. I would. I mean, I would say maybe <laughs> even like Halloween. Okay. Or uh, um, some of the Universal monsters. I don't movies. know because in like like All that right. stuff you see them in their own environment. Here, you're right away. They're thrown into this. You know post pop up the world you don't really get to see them before well you do though because you see um the the two characters who worked as as waiters in the isolated area yeah yeah i don't know what is this like a as hundred, a hundred page graphic yeah. novel about the end of the world mm -hmm. and there's a, a backstory that led up to that i mean i don't know i'd say it is pretty good for the the amount of pages we've got here I don't know. I I thought I don't really understand why you would fault him for the characterization. But okay, whatever we did. <laughs> All right. Any any other? I mean, I do like thing? the character. Well, let it, me ask so. you: How does it stack up to like other stuff you've read by Sala? I mean, do you feel like he's not he's done better characterization in the past? No, I think this is just that's how just he kind does. of a yeah. Sala thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair and, enough. But I mean, the thing is, I really I really am a big Richard Sala fan. Yeah. Like when I'm picking this out, I'm not really doing it for characterization. I just felt that some of the characterization here is just kind of I don't know, like, off or something. Hmm. Okay. Like, did, what did you... What was your take on the Mad Scientist character? Well, I like the Mad Scientist character. Like, why? He just seemed like such well, a stereotypical... You know what I mean? It's like... 
Well, okay. First of all, okay. I have to say, I'm glad you mentioned the color mm -hmm. in this book because that was one of my favorite things about it. Mm -hmm. um, Sala's color work here is... Uh, I will talk about the characters in a minute, but the, the color work here is, is absolutely beautiful. Uh, Saul, of course, has worked most of his career in black and white. And you can see, like, like the covers in the back of Pecula, you Beautiful. can see where he worked, yeah, color, and it was amazing, so and I'm glad he did And, of color. course, he did Delphine, mm -hmm. the wonderful uh, Ignat series that he did, kind of a retelling of Sleeping Beauty in color, and I think that was a real eye-opener for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad he's continuing to work with a color um, palette, um, these beautiful painted pages, uh, beautifully reproduced here. Um, you can really see the artist's hand here in, in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a beautiful, beautiful look to, book to look at. Um, a lot of um, full page drawings, you know, depicting the characters against this large post-apocalyptic environment. Uh, just really beautifully done, mm -hmm. beautifully cartooned. Um, so I wanted to say that for sure uh, before we get into some of the more nitty gritty stuff. Um, but the other thing that was probably my my other favorite thing about this book was the fact that I had no idea before reading this, and when I began reading this... The Hidden or Richard Saul in general? The Hidden. Okay. Um, that this was Richard Sala's take on, and I don't even know if we want to spoil it, but a, a very classic, well-known horror novel. Yeah. Uh, which I didn't know before I read The Hidden. Like, they don't advertise it that way, mm -hmm. and it's not obvious at first, but as you um, continue to read into the well, book... I, I feel pretty much get it from what we've said so far. That yeah, that it's <laughs> basically his take on Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. um, did you know that before you started reading No, I didn't. So I thought it was a lot of fun to kind of slowly come to that realization as you're reading the book. Be like, oh, this is... Richard Sala's version of Frankenstein, and he's kind of taken that concept and those characters and expanded it into this post-apocalyptic story. So that Victor, whose last name we don't get mm -hmm. in this book, but we can probably guess his last name, uh, he's created this monster, but the monster himself has gone on to create many, many other monsters, and those monsters have a, you know, basically assaulted humanity and brought about this apocalyptic mm -hmm. wasteland and kind of want to take over as the new people that call themselves it's really creepy um so that that i also enjoyed about it so in that way i guess i i did find the doctor a really compelling character because i realized that that was kind of Sala's spin on the victor frankenstein but what character. was the spin to it i mean it's pretty straightforward kind of what you'd see in frankenstein yeah i mean it's basically you know the character from frankenstein um but kind of, again, expanded into this post-apocalyptic setting so that he's responsible for the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And he has this weird take or weird relationship with the monster that he yeah. creates because, you know, he, he eventually, um, you know, comes to the point where he's going to, he wants to kill the monster, but then, of course, there's a twist at the end. So... I don't know, I was really entertained by it. I mean, I'm not making the case for this as like this complex, mm -hmm. multi multi-layered work of literature, but I do think it's there's a, there's a little bit more meat to it than what you're giving it credit for. So I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed everything I, about it. No, I really enjoyed it too, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm just... I think we got a little too caught up in the characterization because yeah. I just don't think there was much there at all. It was like surface material. But I mean... I'm not going to Richard Seller for characterization. I'm going okay. for the cool gothic like drawings and I don't know, just a fun dark tale. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's what he provided here, um, mm -hmm. and one of his best works I think to date. So I don't know. Cool. Yeah. Well, and I like I said, I think my my reading of it may have been a little bit different because I read it like juxtaposed right next to Peculia. So compared to that, this had a lot of depth. Mm -hmm.